I'd like to uh, tell you a little story. I don't want to scare you, but it needs to be told. So after my first two ceremonies completing the Palos Fuertes Dieta, I was still um, living in Tambo, but I was just coming out to do my ceremonies. I was coming out for my meals because I had a less strict diet. And it turns to night, I go to bed in Tambo. I'm alone out in the wilderness. As I was going to bed, before I go to bed usually, you know, as it was getting dark, so it's about 5.30, because it gets dark at about 6.30 out in the jungle. It's about 5.30, I start reading a book. I'm trying to think what it was. I think it was Joseph Campbell's Hero of a Thousand Faces. I was rereading it to get some, to kind of refresh myself on it. It's kind of dense, so it'll make you, it requires some concentration, and I was just having problems concentrating because, you know, I was still feeling the effects of the ceremony from the night before. Myself. My eyes getting heavy, you know? I feel like I'm about to pass out just from reading. Like, oh, okay. And as I'm dozing in and out while I'm reading, while I'm lying on my back reading, I hear this, like, chorus of vo voices. It's like, it sounds like ten voices or something. It's like these children's voices, and they're all saying, did you remember to say thank you? But they say it in this fucking sinister, sadistic, they're like, it's a sinister and sadistic way that they say it. They're like, did you remember to say thank you? <laughs> and I was like, Ooh. and as they were saying that, and it was like, you know, echoey and stuff, I pass out. It's getting dark. I hear the voices, I pass out. And as I pass out, I wake up and it's broad daylight and my, mosquito net or the bed underneath the mosquito net the whole th the structure is like much longer it's like 10 feet longer and i'm my body is like 10 feet longer it's all stretched out you know so i realize i'm in like dream space right away but something happens these invisible forces and i can tell there's like 10 spirits that are malevolent or something just start grabbing my body and thrashing it across the bed and choking me and pinning me down and like trying to break my arms and legs. And immediately I knew that out in Tombo, I was being attacked by 10 brujos. You know, like, um, and what brujos are, are like evil, you know, what they would say, like evil spirits, evil, like um, malevolent kind of shamans, like, uh, shamans who use their powers instead of good or healing for evil. So apparently I was like a light that went off in the jungle on the brutal radar and they came out to try to murder me. I try to just start screaming for help and these evil voices are telling me no one can save me out here. I'm going to die and it throws me out of my bed into a creek nearby. There's a like a little river where you can do some kind of, you know, um, makeshift bathing while you're in Tambo. And it throws me into the riverbed. And as I'm climbing out, these 10 evil spirits, I'm trying to scream for help, for more help for the shaman or my girlfriend or whoever. And it is throwing dirt, sticks, rocks into my mouth and at my face my body and stuff and it was also hurling psychic darts at me just like what you read about if you're familiar with the ayahuasca tradition with brujos psychic darts they're like darts that are a form of like you could say like spiritual poison and they were throwing them and it was like you know felt like i was just getting attacked with hundreds of these kind of like porcupine brills or thorns in my body. And so I'm just running and I'm trying to run back away from my Tamo, back to the healing center, or just run away from these 10 brujos. And as I'm running, you know, I can tell that like I'm running, but it's kind of like how you have one of those dreams where you're running in slow motion or you're running and you're kind of in the same place. And as I'm running, I can feel behind me something is fucking taking whatever, like wooden logs or sticks and trying to break my legs as I'm running. And as I'm running, earlier in the day, I 
learned an Icaro just spontaneously in the morning after ceremony. And I was trying to sing it. And it was an Icaro about gratitude. It was about saying like, thank you for everything like that brings you in your life. It was like saying, thank you for, you know, ayahuasca. Thank you for the ceremony. Thank you for friends. So it's like, Gracias ayahuasca. Gracias ayahuasca. And because I learned it that day, I thought, for some reason, instinctively, I thought, okay, maybe I'll sing it to somehow protect me from these brujos. And as I try to sing, they keep throwing more dirt and shit in my mouth. And they're saying to me real wickedly that they're like, your Icaro will not save you. You're going to die out here tonight. So I'm running, and I'm running, and all of a sudden as I'm running, I get transported or teleported into like, it's like a basement level of like a subway. You know, I'm underground or some kind of cave or something. And as I'm running, I see all these people um, in these hallways, and the hallways are all like a maze. I'm going up this set of stairs that is a labyrinth, but every face that I'm looking at is just twisted and contorted. And they're kind of walking like zombies. And I realized that what I'm walking in is a, you know, structure building filled with creatures that have been basically possessed by these brujos. And as I'm running up the stairs and stuff, they keep telling me, you're going to die. You're going to die. And they keep trying to break my legs and break my the bones of my body, arms, whatever it is, behind me while I'm running. And I keep trying to go back to that Icaro. And they keep telling me that that Icaro has no power. But one of the four Icaros I had that I sang to activate my DNA after I completed Palos Fuertes, or completed the Palos Fuertes Gieta, one of those four just popped in my head. And for something, some reason, instinctively, it says, a voice inside me says, sing this Icaro. And it's really simple. It just um, repeats about the Palos Fuertes Dieta. It goes, Palos Fuertes, give me knowledge. Palos Fuertes, give me power. Palos Fuertes, give me wisdom. Teach me so I'll teach others. So that popped in my head and I just start singing it. And as I'm singing it, these, you know, zombie type things in the hallways are looking at me. And as I'm singing it, I kind of wave my hand or stick my hand out. And when I stick my hand out, it transforms their facial expressions. They go from these twisted, contorted things to these like bright, like smiling faces as if I've released them from a spell and all of a sudden they're my friends. Like whenever you see those movies where like something's shrouded in darkness and then when you release the love in them, they just become something totally different. It was like literally one of those kind of things. And these other ones that were chasing me that were much kind of more aggressive and more zombie-like that were trying to attack me, I would just sing. And as I would sing, I would stick my hand out. And from that, I could actually telekinetically lift them and throw them and flip them and stuff. So some of them, I would just wave my hand while I was singing and their faces would just change. Like I lifted a curse from them. The other ones, um, I would sing and I would, could pick them up and throw them around and stuff. 
And another thing I was doing was as some of these, you know, evil spirits, these zombies, these brujos were chasing me, I would sing and I'd throw my hand behind me. And I could create out of the ground, out of like just telekinetically, I could create these like barriers. Like, you know, whenever you watch like one of those kind of movies where you see someone with telekinesis, and they can just start all of a sudden making the dirt come up and, you know, make barriers out of the dirt so that they couldn't, the, that you could block them. So it's making these like kind of walls behind me while I was being chased. So singing, and while I was singing, I was kind of throwing some zombies, changing some of them, like lifting a curse and creating these kind of dirt barriers. They were chasing me and I was kind of making my way up these levels. So um, I'm at the top level and it's like daylight. And, um, you know, I see in the distance, I'm like in a downtown area, like it's like a downtown city block. And there's a giant busy street and across the street is like a kind of tunnel and at the other end of the tunnel is this grassy hill it's a picturesque scene it's like out of a fucking painting it looks like sir rock's afternoon at the grand Jet. and i'm running towards it and these things are still chasing me and i'm singing throwing these kind of dirt mounds with my thoughts and song and i'm running 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 and as i run i jump across the street i leap across the street into this tunnel and then the tunnel just turns into all just pure white light. As it turns into pure white light, I'm on a hammock and I'm kind of holding my girlfriend and she's lying on top of me. I can feel her chest, her heart beat next to mine and I'm kind of, you know, I've got my arms around her. Um, <laughs> and she says of all things, do you like the gift I got you? I get it for all of my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> I said, all of your ex-girlfriends? She goes, in my past life, I used to be a dude. <laughs> Which is just, I well, we can talk about that some other time. Um, but then it kind of goes into daylight. Like I start waking up and I realize I'm waking up. But I'm, as I'm waking up, I can tell I'm in the half awake, half sleep state. Um, I'm... I'm like halfway opening my eyes and in the horizon or at the edge of the sky, I can see these fucking evil spirits in the clouds, like the 10 of them. And they say to me that they're going to come back with more, like a hundred more, and they're going to murder me. And I say, go ahead. I go, I'm not afraid of you. You know, I, then I actually start trash talking them because back in the day I used to trash talk when I used to play Xbox live on I used to play a lot of call of duty modern warfare and I used to you know swear like a sailor so i say bring them i don't give a fuck you know i say i'm gonna butt fuck your mother till she bleeds <laughs> that was like my trash talk to some brujos i actually trash talked to some brujos as they said they were gonna murder me and uh you know uh i finally woke up and what was kind of crazy about that story was that I've always been suspicious about stories about brujos and stuff like people will say at a certain point when you go deep enough with the medicine deep enough with the ADA um, you'll be tested and if you have too much power brujos will come brujos can come and try to attack you or steal your power or whatever a lot of that I had, I thought that was kind of more of the superstitious aspects of ayahuasca. I saw all the stuff that you see as like the angels or the demons or the spirits or whatever. I saw them as kind of like symbolic of energy systems in yourself. Like they were metaphors of yours that were ultimately pointed to yourself, symbols that point to yourself that you had to work out. And that was just something else entirely. I mean, it was fucked up because I understood a lot of my dreams. You know, you dream every day in time. Well, I was writing down all my dreams and they were very symbolic. And I could later, you know, after enough time with them, I could figure out the dream symbolically. But this was so specific to what people say about what happens with brujos. And it was like so unexpected, like... It was after my second ceremony, after I made a god machine, after I collapsed a multiverse. Ten spirits said that they were going to murder me. I mean, 
maybe there, there, there could be symbolic content to it. I don't, you know, dismiss that at all, but I just found it incredibly fucked up that it was so specific to what other people have described about like brujos that have attacked them or come to murder them or whatever. What was interesting was I was, you know, totally prepared to go back in the next day or however many days it would take and fight these brujos repeatedly to defeat them. I had no fear and I didn't fear dying. It's just like, come on, fucking bring it. The next day, uh, I tell one of the shamans to come go back into the healing center and I just say, 10 brutals tried to murder me last night. He goes, see? <laughs> and I was like, yeah. And the next plant plant I was going to Dieta on was a um, power plant called Ahosacha. It's like a garlicky tasting plant is for power and protection. So I said, make me some Ahosacha for tonight. I'm going to go back and I'm going to fight them. He's like, okay. And one of the other shamans, he shows up you know, a couple hours later, and I say, you know, 10 bur brujos just tried to murder me last night. But I sang my acro and I defeated them. And he goes, yeah, he goes, you're too powerful for them. They can't harm you. I said, next time, just blow my pacho on them and say, shoo, shoo. <laughs> um, what those brujos turned out to be was something else entirely. What I thought was kind of evil turned out to be benevolence and the benevolence revealed itself to me in the ceremony immediately after that and I'll share that with you at another time. Thank you.